Ireland's historic fishing port of Kinsale, host of the 2013 Disabled Sailing World Championships. The event's the first leg of a long campaign for these sailors. The goal, to compete at the 2016 Paralympics. The Kiwi crew is led by two of the best known names in New Zealand sailing. David Barnes and Rick Dobson are both now living with multiple sclerosis and reigniting their careers as Paralympic sailors. Right, okay, well, I'll start with uh, Dave and I, we were, you know, we've, I've, we've been very successful in our background of sailing. And then about 13 years ago, we both got diagnosed with uh, MS, multiple sclerosis. Um, and then basically, you can't start the top end of your game of the sailing industry, of the teams. Uh, we, we both just said, all right, we're out. Uh, first five years, I was in probably what you call denial. I said, this can't be me. This can't be my life. And I watched the Olympics, the Paralympics in London on TV and watched it hard. And I thought, geez, these guys are bloody good. And they, they weren't worried about their, industry, their, their injury, they were worried about performing. And, and that, that's where Dave and I are. We're, we're quite hard, hard sailors and things. And, and, and so we thought, sure, we can do this. Even though they're longtime competitors, they've never sailed together until today. They're in an unfamiliar boat, trying to figure out who's top dog. It's going really well. You've just got to figure each other out, which we did, and, and I was, oh, I'm tactician, he's the skipper. And I just thought the first, the first few times we now, I thought, I wonder if the little shit's going to listen to me. And, and so, I, so I caught off a few shots I knew went right, and, and he did it, so I thought, it's going to work out just fine. But we actually get on really well together. He's a very nice guy and he's um, got a heart of gold and we both have a, got a common goal. So the partnership actually works really well. And that's what happens with the Kiwis. You know, we look after each other. Unless you do something really bad, then <laughs> you're on your own. <laughs> I was born into a boating family. We always were involved in boats at a very early age. In fact, I could probably uh, row a dinghy about the same time that I could walk. Living in Wellington, if you can sail in Wellington, you can sail anywhere. So it was actually a really good training ground to be competitive. And then I actually got involved in the America's Cup and ended up doing six different America's Cups over the years. David Barnes was the skipper of New Zealand's big boat, KZ-1, in 1988. I guess a lot of people call it the renegade challenge, the mismatch, you know, Monahal against Multihull. If that is the best that Dennis can do, then I think it's a disappointment for him to be defending in the America's Cup, because I feel the boat could have gone a lot better than what it did. Can you answer that, Dennis? No, I guess when he's won uh, four America's Cup, uh, he can uh, then tell me how to do it. <laughs> Dubious pleasure, but somebody had to do it. Rick Dobson has an equally strong sailing pedigree. He was the onboard strategist for Team New Zealand and Russell Coots on their two victorious America's Cup campaigns. I was very lucky at a young age when we saw the little ones and we were signing against the Cooters and the Joneses and the, we have all the good families that were from Wellington in those days. And Dave Barnes too. I have had a very good career. We damn near won every race. We won, they lost. I was on with one Australian member when the boat broke in half and sank and uh, I was part of the Australian swimming team. The boat has snapped in two. I had the 
visions are going through my head of um, watching a war movie, so boats sinking and people getting sucked down by the boat. And I thought, if I'm going to get off this thing, I'm going to get it out of here in a hurry. They've got to get off the boat fast. When I jumped in, I just swam. And as fast as I could, they actually get, get out of there. Look at it go down. They're panicking on getting the crew. This is incredible. Thirteen years ago, David started noticing problems with his health. I knew that something was not quite right because I, I was getting double vision to my left hand side. My balance was not quite what it was. And I actually thought I had a pinched nerve in my neck. It was not until um, 2003, at the end of the America's Cup in New Zealand, that my neurologist said, you know, I know for sure what it is. You've actually got MS. Then it was a, a case of accepting that my lifestyle had to change. At almost exactly the same time, Rick was experiencing identical symptoms, early signs of multiple sclerosis. Well, with the MS and you're sort of feeling a bit sorry for yourself and you're sitting at home and, and things and, and you, see, you, you see your mates that used to, your teammates, and guys you know very well, they've gone forward in their lives and you're still parked here. Now it took me a while to figure out you should do it, you've got to go back and get in the stadium, and I, now I am. I can do it again, because we've got MS. And I can do it again when they, they can't. If you win a gold, that will just finish it off nicely. And it's changed, changed me hugely, you know. Now you're back in, you think, oh, yeah, God, yeah, I miss this. This is, this is great. The Paralympic campaign involves the men going back to their early days of sailing, a small boat, but of a class they have never sailed before. Even if we get our ass kicked, it doesn't matter. We are going to learn a hell of a lot from, from it. And um, so when we sail against it does Paralympic <laughs> people... David and Rick will sail in the Paralympic class boat, the Sonar. There is no Sonar boat in New Zealand, so they were forced to train on a different craft. It's like saying you're going to be a tennis player, but you don't play tennis, you play badminton. At a fundraising event in Auckland, some of the biggest names in world sailing gather, paying $500 a ticket to support the Paralympic campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, Russell Coots. I certainly, for one, wish them all the best and expect them to... Uh, um, there's no doubt that they'll be putting in absolute maximum effort and expect them to do well. As Russell said, we're here tonight for, for Rick and for Barnsley, who I owe a lot because of their success that they had with the, with the team. Look, I came third in the Bright Eye Beach Boating Club bloody warm-up regatta one year. That's as good as I got. So, you know, the yachtsmen that are amongst you are, are absolutely the best. All, all power to your arm, guys. I wish you absolutely all success. A donor offers to pay the cost of a brand new sonar boat. With money in the bank, the guys can now get on with the sailing. Like, lots of twists when the breeze mm. comes up. So you 2D your existing sails? Many of the same sail makers that work on the America's Cup sails lend their skills. It's a really good thing for Dave and myself, I mean, to be involved with these guys. It's enabled us a lot. Yeah, what, what I'm thinking about doing is actually having a titanium ring. Oh, yeah? Actually, and to have uh, different hull positions uh, yeah. for the tack. We're going to build and develop our own sails here for testing, and then we're trying to do one of them.
The boat's underway, but there are crewmen short. It was a three-man boat, so Rick and I, yes, we're sailing, but we need a third person. We've actually talked to a number of people, seeing what their disability would be, what their classification could be. They can't just bring any other sailor on board. In Paralympic sailing, each person has a classification number related to their level of disability. The maximum classification number for all three sailors combined is 14. Rick's rated a six, David's a four. They need to find a sailor whose disability is the same or less than David. You want people to actually be better in their health, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for worse people. John Weston also has MS. A keen sailor, he's hoping he can join the crew. Oh, man, you're walking here. You're too good. Just you mind me asking about your um, disability? Or how does the MS affect you? Well, you know, I've been through the usual process, I guess. Yeah. You know, loss of eyesight and okay. loss of balance. Is that, and... is that where it started? In your eyes? Yeah, that's where it started. That's where it started yeah. with me. Yeah. And me, yeah. But John's never yeah. been classified. He can only do that if he goes to an event offshore. So we have to get a per choose a person and say, OK, but we, you're not bad. Come away with us. And then the way for the judges overseas to say what you are. Is it an option that we might be able to get you to uh, Ireland, get you classified? Certainly. Yeah. 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 We know that, yes, he is to be a very good sailor. Yeah. And uh, he would be, if he actually did classify um, the right number for yeah, us, sure. I, I he would be fantastic. But if John does not get a classification of four or lower in Ireland, he will not be allowed on the boat. How does the classification work, actually? Just, just to bring me up to speed. Um, they're testing your strength. And they, they, they don't and they, take your balance and say, no, like, don't make when you're walking walk. down the line the dock. Yeah, that yeah. worries me, eh? Yeah, me too. Yeah. Same thing, shit, don't try too hard, you son Richard, you know? <laughs> The Kiwi Gold Racing Team has listed John as a crewman. But first, he needs to be classified. And we have to ask you a few questions. Uh, what is your disability? Uh, multiple sclerosis. OK. Now we shall have to examine you. Quickly. Multiple sclerosis isn't easy to assess. John can be strong one moment, yet exhausted a few hours okay. later. Okay. You are pretty strong. Classifiers test everyone on the boat too. Pull okay. as hard as you can. Once clap your hands. On, clap. Okay. Uncleat. And then I go over to the other side. side. That's right. And that would be six times. Okay. During the races, they observe to be certain the classifications are accurate and fair. OK, fine. Kinsale is the dominant yachting town of Ireland. These world champs are the first big chance for sailors to prepare for the 2016 Rio Paralympics. 18 nations are competing. The Kiwi's sporting reputation is well known. They are the best bunch ever. They really are. I mean, they're doing the country so proud. We didn't have a fresh fruit salad on the menu. But he asked, was it possible? And of course, no problem at all. So um, really, it was them who instigated, and it's going to be on the menu from now on. Our kiwi gold salad. Rick likes a bit extra um, natural yogurt, so we have to, of course, accommodate Rick. And my cheeks very rosy this morning. <laughs>
John's classification has been decided. I'm just going to check the uh, classification board to see what sort of uh, numbers we've got. <sighs> ah, shit. John Wilson, a seven on review. He's too high for us. So if Dave's a four and I'm a six, we'll soon he's at we're out of the game park. John's been classified a seven, the highest possible. He's off the boat and unlikely to ever team up with David and Rick. Breeze is, um, I think, definitely good for us. But think... John is now a support crew. The Kiwi Gold Reserve, Christchurch sailor Andrew May, is coming aboard as third man. He's less experienced, but his classification is a four. Perfect. I mean, these two sailors are legends in New Zealand sailing and in world sailing. And um, so to have the opportunity to get out there and, and sail with these guys was you know, sort of, it was quite a little bit surreal to start off with, yeah. Put it down as Kiwi Gold. The knowledge they have is amazing. They're quite different. So, David's sort of very quiet and thoughtful in the way he does things, and, and our Rex likes to tell you how he sees it. No, oh, not taking any lead on board. Hey, Randy, you doing underneath, because you're lower. You're doing down, OK? Does look fantastic. This is a good looking boat. Racing doesn't begin for two days. The Kiwis use the time to suss out the local yeah. conditions. So we're just looking at um, with the tide change, it changes on the sides a bit first, so you can see this mark, the tide's already starting to come in, even though it's not quite uh, low tide yet, so you get a bit of a rotation around it. The tide will always change on the sides a bit first, so here's our first indication with the mark hanging in that direction. So we've got our, um, our lightning tide stick here. Um, and it's got a whole bunch of Kinsale rocks that we pulled up, and this is made out of someone's old um, boat hook. So we've fashioned ourselves a little um, tide sort of uh, indicator. So we'll chuck it in and see how we go. Chuck it in, mate. Beauty. You can see it just floats slightly with the, with the end up. So what I'll do is I'm going to time it for two minutes. And we're just going to see how many boat lengths it drifts. Um, it's got a little leak in it, this one. It's a boy! <laughs> this gives us a bit of confidence, really. We know when things are changing, um, so we can make the, make the decisions at the time for tactics, um, which side of the course we want to be going out. Rick's at the dock early, eager to get the new boat into the water. Ah, it's champagne. The skipper's having a slow morning. Yes, Barnsley. The slow movers. Here, he's making his way. Slow motion. Come, boys. Sailing a new boat with a new team during a world championship, it's a big ask. Oh, that's right, mate. Just a sip. <laughs> Just a sip. Just a sip. Oh, it's more than a sip, it's a gulp. <laughs> yes, you guys.
Getting more than 100 disabled sailors on the water is a massive process. They've loaded the boats. The first day of racing's cancelled. There's not enough wind. They're at the mercy of the weather. There's no, no one out there, but it's clocking around and things and say, so they made the right decision. Some teams work on their boats. The Kiwis go back to the hotel. It's more important that they rest up. As the day progresses, you, are, you get tired. What happens is you walk here, you walk as if you're a bit pissed, and, or a bit drunk, sorry. Uh, you talk as if you had a bit too much drink. But it's, you know, it's, it's a progression. You do get slower and wonkier as the day goes on. Well, tomorrow is eight knots. Wonky Raceway. Yeah, I like, sure, sure. I like the... Uh, Shorter again. I like the salt with the... Improvement. That is like a bird. <laughs> Look at it. Oh, not too bad, mate. <sighs> Big! <laughs> nice! Yeah, he's a nice guy. Oh, well done. It's gone. It's gone. See? Fast. Overnight, the winds come up. Racing's on. The boats jostle on the start line. The Kiwis are in a great position. But it's a false start. On the restart, the Kiwis are stuck at the back of the pack. The competitive side never ever goes away. You know that you have to come up the start line well. You know you have to be um, in the right place at the right time to actually take the first shift and you know you're not like you used to be, but you remember how you used to be. You're doing what you actually have done all your life. You really enjoy it. We're doing the same old thing, same thing, and it makes you think the old days. When you get everything clicks, everything goes well, it's fantastic. Immediately say that it's just unreal and I just love it so much. They fight their way through the fleet, but still only claw to seven. Races are run in quick succession. The Kiwi guys are finding their stride. They push past race leaders France and Australia and finish second, just moments behind the Norwegians. It's definitely a good feeling when you're sitting there and you Go into a couple of waves and the boat really lights up and actually takes off and you think, ah, oh, this is great. You get a real buzz from being in control and getting the results that you're after. By the third race, the multiple sclerosis is starting to bite. Rick and David are tired. We used to be really good sailors. And uh, you think, oh, we probably should beat them. But no, nah, they're good. They're very competitive and, and like to win. It's a battle to cross the line in 11th. Hey, hey. The long days taken its toll. With the MS, you can't push yourself like you used to when you're a young guy. By the end of the day, you've had it. You don't go into the pub, do the celebrational things, or if you have a bad, bad day, it, you know, you just go to bed.
Across the next six races, their teamwork improves. They ultimately finish in eighth place, ahead of host nation Ireland and close on the heels of the 2012 London medalists. Well, we finished eighth overall, which is when you sort of, you know, people said, oh, I hope you get in the top ten. So, said, well, what better than that? I want to get at least a top five, not top three. But eighth, and, you, and the, all, the, all the medalists were here. The gold medal from the last games, the gold, silver, bronze were here, and the fleet is really, really good. And you sort of don't expect to be as good as they are, but shit, they are. If we um, keep chugging along, and doing all the things that we actually set out to do from the very beginning of the program, then I think in a couple of years' time we'll be um, pretty competitive. Ireland has been a solid start for such a new team. And there will be plenty more regattas before the Paralympics in 2016. There's no question it's actually um, the best thing I can do for my health. It's really given me a, a second chance. It's given me another lease of life. Your life isn't just going to the ground. You're now, you're away again. Now we're going to get a third member. Certainly find somebody that's actually prepared to put up with you, Rick. <laughs>